It's Tuesday morning, August 9th, 2016. We're trying to get a focus on this picture of Dr. Morris, Dr. George Starr, Morris Racine, and Dr. John Southwick. And a photo taken in around the year 2000 of the doctors that operated the North Country Medical Group. Today is August 9th. On August 4th, Dr. Starr passed away. We are doing this program on August 9th because we're about to witness the groundbreaking ceremony at the brand new location for the Hudson Headwaters Health Network here in Champlain. And uh, it's all an offshoot from the, what originally here was the North Country Medical Center and North Country Medical Group and currently called the North Country Family Health Center. That apparently 481 Route 11. We'll read what is, is written in this Champlain 2000 book. The North Country Medical Group originated from the North Country Medical Center Foundation, conceived in 1960 by folks in the towns of Moores and Champlain and the village of Rouses Point, with a committee of Clifford LaPlante, the chairman, Lawrence Paquette, the secretary, Milo Marnes, the treasurer, and members. Richard Collins, Franklin Forbes, Frank Goodrich Jr., Amos Musso, Paul Vogan, Jesse Walker, Raymond Walsh, and John T. Zerlo. With loans and donations and subscriptions, the committee after this committee after land donated by Esther and Sam Long, this was part of the Sam Long farm here, hired contractor Jules Trahan to construct the main building in 1961 some architectural help from the Sears Foundation. The committee then enlisted Dr. Richard Schulteis to practice medicine at the center until 1963 when Dr. John Southwick took over the practice to be joined in 1965 by Dr. George Starr. In 1970, Dr. Starr and Southwick formed the South Star Realty Partnership and purchased the medical center from the foundation. In 1981, Dr. Morris Racine joined Southwick and Starr. And uh, after the printing of this uh, Champlain 2000 book, uh, in the years to follow that, uh, Dr. Racine bought out uh, Drs. Uh, Southwick and Starr and was the owner here. And then he uh, sold the medical practice to the Hudson Headwaters Health Network. And the situation here has continued to grow and grow. And it's resulting in a brand new facility, a state-of-the-art facility, facility that'll be ready and fully operated by the year about this time uh, in 2017. So today we're about to witness the groundbreaking. For the most part, we'll be turning our microphone over to uh, Joey Trombley for this edition of Hometown Stories. We've now moved further down Route 11. We're pointing our camera in a westerly direction. We're at the groundbreaking site or the future home of Hudson Held Headwaters Health Network, North Country Family Health. Beyond that little knoll here, this little hill, there are two houses between here and the, the shopping center, the Champlain Shopping Center, which is located at the intersection of Route 9 and Route 11. That's, of course, where Price Chopper and Ace Hardware and Kinney Drugs and other businesses are, are situated. And across the road is the Amar development that's been here since uh, probably the 1970s. Uh, half a dozen or so homes here ro located off Route 11. So uh, sometime, uh, probably a little over a year from now, that new facility will be built. They've got plenty of pictures of it for us to uh, look at today and it looks like the, the folks handling the shovels won't have to work too hard. <laughs> That's where the groundbreaking will take place right there. Hello and I'm Joey Trombley along with Calvin Castine and of course Calvin's been talking about this big event here up in the northern tier. Hudson Headwaters building their new facilities here on um, Route 11 and um, Calvin was up earlier at the medical center but 
this doesn't happen without corporate support and, and the public support. And Danielle, you you work for Stewart's. Yes, I do. Okay, and Antoinette, you run the Rouses Point store? Yes, I do. Okay, so what's impressive to the folks out here and, and just knowing what a corporation like Stewart's means to our area, not only do they supply God knows how many jobs to the local economy, you also support the local causes. And that, you, know, you see it every holiday, you have the matching funds and stuff. Mm -hmm. But Stewart's really went big time here. Uh, and I think you really see the value here. And if you can kind of tell the folks what the Corporation of Stewart's did for this community and for Hudson Headwaters. Uh, Stewart's and the Dake family donated $100,000 last year to uh, Hudson Headwaters. Um, I believe that that has given them the ability to add the x-ray services to the facility. Um, and we're very happy to contribute more to this community every year. It is amazing to me, and I'm sure to the viewers out there, and there's probably not a viewer out there that's going to watch this that hasn't been to a Stewart's before. And um, it's just, it's corporate neighbors like that that understand the value of a community, the strength of a community. And I, I mean, I know I speak for the community, I speak for Calvin. For the people of the North Country, that was just a very awesome, awesome donation well, from, thank you. from Stewart's. And it's the Drake family? Dake. Date? Yeah, Dake. Okay. okay, the Date family. Absolutely incredible. And Antoinette, you've been to a bunch of stewards, haven't you, as far as management? I, th I think you were in Osable at one time. I was you? in Osable for a number of years, and I've been up in Rouse's Point for about a year and a half now. Okay. Yes. And uh, so you've seen probably the growth of stewards, I'm assuming, as you've been around with them for a few years. Absolutely. Over the last almost six years now. Six years. And I assume the shops seem to be growing every year. Absolutely. Yeah. And <laughs> now, now, not only grow, I mean, but the store themselves are growing. But there must be growth in new stewards going up, or have they kind of saturated? Um, we're always uh, looking to grow our current shops and also looking to add new shops to the company. Now, what what is your radius here in, in the area as far as stewards? I know you go as far as Albany and Saratoga Springs. So how far south do you go? Um, we go south down to Poughkeepsie, Kingston area. We go out west into uh, Watertown and just uh, recently got into the Syracuse market. Wow. So, um, so most of, of New York. Grow. Yes, and a little bit of Vermont as well. And into Vermont too? Yep. All right. And how many uh, shops do we have now? Uh, over 320. Okay. And is there a long-term growth? Is there a number that they try to hit every year for... Um, I don't, I don't know that, that we have or, a, or that a goal. Corporate <laughs> I don't know that we have a goal, but always looking to just um, add to any community that needs us and, and we like to add to that. Okay. Again, Danielle and Antoinette from Stewart's uh, with a very, very generous donation of $100,000 um, to this project here. And we're growing from a little medical center uh, down the road that I grew up with to this huge um, health network that's going to be here in the North Country. And in and, and reading the uh, some preliminary stuff, there's 17,000 people that uh, will be serviced by Hudson Headwaters here, Calvin, if I read that right. It was, um, and it's uh, the, the, they're going from a 4,500 square foot health facility, which was the medical center, um, along Route 11, 4,500 square feet, and they're gonna service 17,000 residents. So, very, very impressive. Um, Thank you, Howard. That was Howard Nelson. Day. We ordered this especially for you. Welcome to everyone here today. My name is Celine Parkett, and I'm a member, a board member of the Hudson Headwaters Health Network, representing this area of the North Country. On behalf of the Health Network, we are honored to have you here today to share our happy occasion. Your presence here is much appreciated. We have waited for a long time for this momentous occasion. <clears throat> there were many speed bumps and a mountain of hard work to get us to this day. Mm -hmm. My sincere thanks to all the people at Hudson Headwaters who worked so hard to get us here at this very moment. And this, I'd like to introduce uh, three of my fellow board members here today. Uh, Millie Anselo uh, represents Indian Lake. Uh, Kathy Moses represents the Spring Lake Health Center. And Dr. Bill Dwyer represents Chester Horizon Health Center. Welcome to all of you to Champlain. But finally, here we are. The preliminaries are over and the main event is about to start. 
groundbreaking is thought of as a sign of progress. So I'm happy to have the privilege of being part of this ceremony. I'm super excited about this project. You have to know we worked hard here. When word was finally received that we were about to break ground, I was so euphoric that I suggested that we declare a holiday in Champlain today. <laughs> And I can tell you, no one is happier than the providers and staff at North Country Family Health. So I hope everyone here today will share our pride and joy. So we're assembled for this collective experience, one which we all look forward to, and one which we will proceed as soon as we get out of the way. I have the privilege and honor of introducing the man who is the brain behind Hudson Headwaters Health Network. This man is known nationally for having set the gold standard for health centers. Dr. John Ruggie, the CEO of the network, came to the Adirondacks some 40 years ago and saw a need for primary care. <clears throat> and thus began what has grown to 17 health centers. I will let him tell you the story. John? <laughs> Everybody here has had some important thing to contribute to this new health center. Yeah. Almost new, doesn't exist yet, but it's about to. Um, this, this really started for us when Dr. Racine gave a call after a medical talk and said, you know, it was harder and harder to find physicians for this area, and maybe we could do something by working together. And have we ever? Um, maybe there's been not a few moments of suspense. You can imagine we are, because we are a state license, there are lots of physical requirements we have. And with no offense to Dr. Racine and his carpentry skills, he came in a little worried about the facility being undersized and not exactly in a, in a place to grow as the doctors would expect it. Not to mention all the technical stuff, like how wide the hallways have to be, handicap bathrooms, and ventilation requirements and all around. So it's the very first ceremony that we had in Champlain. We were fortunate to have the health commission, Dr. Shaw, come with his staff to survey us. And so I remember holding our breath as the surveyor was going to come and say, nope, you have to wait for the new building. You can't operate here. But Dr. Racine took Dr. Shaw through, and Dr. Shaw came out and said, this is so charming. <laughs> and with that, the surveyor said, oh, yeah, pass is going to feel fine temporarily for two or three years. Well, this was just reminded me it's now four years that we're set to go. And there are those of us that are symbolic hard hats and um, those that are real hard hats who are still going to work. And so, again, in every community we've had, we've depended upon local support, local people, local <coughs> government, translating right up to the, to the state government. And that's made it possible. And it, proven for Champlain as well. And so um, from, from everybody, the business community, door shops this year were initial contributors and are contributing to our imaging, North Country Commission, um, state government. Um, it took a little time, centered a little, <laughs> but we're here in a major, major way that, that made this possible. So really want to, um, again, say thanks for everything everybody here has, has done. The, um, Larry Barton represents the town of Champlain, and if you can look at your words, one of the assignments we gave to Celine is that Dr. Steen long ago named this North Country Family Health, but that's kind of kind of diffuse. And here's the occasion if we're ever going to have a chance to do renaming. So today I asked Celine, well, what are you going to name this place? She thought Champlain Family Health Center might be a good name. So we have to take a vote to see if that'll work. Really? services to all the towns in the North Country, all parts of Perkins County. Many people have asked 
when this project was to start. And I can now say it started, and I hope it'll be open next year. I know this has been a, in planning stages for many years, and we thank you for considering Champlain for this project. The town board wishes you success, and we are willing to help you in any way that we can. Again, thank you, and welcome to the town of Champlain. giving me the opportunity to say a few words because this is really a very important occasion and there are, as John said, a lot of people to thank. Certainly, thank Dr. Racine for having the vision to think how is this going to continue and how is healthcare going to continue in this area when I retire. And to look to John and community health facilities was really key. So very important, CVPH, Stevens Monday jumped right on board. This is a great idea. And of course, the entire board of the um, Helps Hudson Headwaters joined in. So this was a number one priority in the capital funding. And um, it did take a long time, but it's done. I don't know much in government that doesn't take a long time. So except the things you don't want. They seem to happen overnight, but uh, nevertheless, <clears throat> we're here, and we all know that when people move to an area, if you're, you know, of a younger age than me, you consider education and health care. And it's important to be able to have health care for your children, for your family, and for you as you continue in this field. But other people living here who are older, health care is number one. And knowing that you can get health care in this area is really a huge, huge benefit. Uh, <clears throat> I figured my time coming up wrong this morning, Sharon will tell you, I told her to meet, uh, I was picking her up and meeting her at 6.30 so we'd be here by 10. <laughs> and we could have been to Montreal and back, but uh, as we approached Plattsburgh at quarter after 8, I said, oh, somehow I didn't figure this right. So, so we went to Moore's and uh, did some stuff, met with Jeff, and also got over and talked to Jack Dragoon, who had been the supervisor for 40 years. And Jack said, I would love to be coming today, but I have to go into CVPH. I need to have some blood work done. I said, you won't have to do that after this because you'll have so many health services that will be here at this operation. So my hat's off to all of you who contributed to this, all of you who took part. And uh, we're very fortunate to have someone like John Ruggie who knows, he knows where all the money is. And if you ever added up all of the grants he got in health care to our area, uh, you would be just blown away because uh, we have benefited so greatly from his vision and his interest and his knowledge on how to do these health centers and how to do them well. And certainly this will be another example of doing one well. So thank you very much and I look forward to the ribbon cutting. So thank you. Betty Little is such a promoter. She said that we were number one for funding for this area. We were only tied for number one. <laughs> number one in my mind. <laughs> and she gives me so much credit saying that I know where all the money is. We only have to know one thing. Grimsfall's National Bank. <laughs> we never prowl when we know. But beyond the bank, we know the entire business community has been enormously supportive. And no one better representative than, you, than Jerry Douglas, who um, has really been for us also every, um, every step and supporting and writing our letters of support and finding us here that we didn't know about. So 
other players that we see towards the team. And so for this, we have to thank our own employees and all the partners. And do you have a chance for a few words? Can you make it to the front? <laughs>
is making sure that, that this hole in the ground becomes something pretty magnificent for the long term. I turn this back over to Howard Nelson, who's going to choreograph the um, the fake opening or the <laughs> fake the fake groundbreaking. So when the real one goes out in the background. Howard, thank you. I just would like to invite each of the speakers to come over and get a hard hat from the table and go behind the pile. I'd also like to invite Tom Murphy to um, join the, the group because he was so, Glenn's Falls National Bank is really key to this. So if everyone would, you know, the state. and then everyone can come around right. and take photos. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And of course there's the questions as well. All the official dignitaries are lining up. Uh, looks like they have enough helmets for everyone. Hopefully they have enough shovels. Official groundbreaking ceremony here to signify the construction of the Hudson Headwaters facility, the new facility here in the town of Champlain. We'll replace the North Country Medical Center uh, in sometime uh, in late to mid to late 2017. Howard uh, Nelson's uh, coordinating it, getting uh, people lined up so news media can cover it. There we go. <laughs> Nobody, there'll be no calluses today. No calluses today. <laughs> Stay right here, young fella. Uh, you want to interview me? I want to talk to you right here. Our, sure. Our interviewer is busy. Uh, <laughs> so, what's your name again? Nathan Sugiyama. And uh, I'm a third year medical student at UVM. At UVM. So. Yep. I saw you arrive with Dr. Racine. Uh, yep. Are you working here at the... I am. I am at North County Family Medicine uh, office. Having a good time. Been here for the last month. Learning a lot. Dr. Racine is an incredible physician and his community is in, I mean, really, really lucky to have him. So. Okay, so what does a, a medical student do? Do you kind of uh, shadow Dr. Racine or do you see patients on your own? Or how does that work? I shadow Dr. Racine. I see patients on my own and work with Dr. Racine on the plan and how we're going to move forward with the patients, including testing and imaging and follow-ups. So it's a lot of day-to-day, -day basic family medicine and a lot of physician development, a lot of developing my identity as a doctor. Dr. Racine's doing a really good job of helping me there. Yeah, well, it's, I assume that's normal for a third-year student that you absolutely. You, so this is, a, and if you're at UVM, it's nice to have a, a place to go that isn't too far away. Yeah? This is a great place to uh, to learn about family medicine. This community really has a need, and it has the ability to teach a lot about what a physician needs to be and can be in this day and age. Okay, so how how often are you here, and how long will you be here? I've been here for the last five weeks. I am only here until the end of the week, so I'm kind of sad. I've learned a lot, and I'm grateful. This community has given a lot to me, so I'm... Where are you from? I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. <laughs> You're a long ways from home. A long ways from home. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, third-year student, is it, how, how, when, do you, when do you become a, an intern? I become an intern after I finish my fourth year, and I just started my third year, so two more years to go. Yep. And then we'll see from there and see where residency takes me, and then I'll be an intern. But I love it out here. This is an amazing part of the country. Oh, glad, glad, glad you're liking it. Yep. Um, so, so good luck to you, and you know, uh, uh, everything you've learned from Dr. Racine, you've got to take as gospel truth. Of course, you understand that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for chatting with us.
Hey, congratulations. Thank you very much. What was your name? <clears throat> Well, I'm with Gary Douglas, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, and, and Gary, it's great that you made the trip up north, like up here, but you have been such an advocate to the North Country in many, many uh, ways on, on businesses coming here and stuff, and you're, I think we're seeing a renaissance of growth here in the North Country. Absolutely, and, uh, and I think this is very important for the Northern Tier here in the North Country as well. As I, as I was pleased to have a chance to say, health-related development like this project is economic development. They aren't two different things. Um, and that's not only because of the uh, the job. This is going to be a significant employer and uh, and, uh, and, a, and a purchaser and a customer here in the community, but it's, it's it goes well beyond that, um, particularly in rural areas like this, uh, to sustain manufacturers like we have here in, in the northern tier and would like to see more of, and customs brokerage operations and all of that. You have to have a healthy community and a healthy population for productivity, for uh, for workforce. Um, and, uh, and, and this will help guarantee that going forward here in this region. So it is economic development. It's that important. It's not just kind of in isolation. Oh, that's a very important health care project, which it is. It's it's more significant than that. And I don't and I know a lot of people do, but there's probably people out here out there watching this that don't realize the work that our chamber does behind the scenes. And it's phenomenal work that you guys do that people don't even hear about. Well, it's fun. It's been 24 years and Has it's it still been 24? fun. 24? I'm, I'm finishing my 24th year right now. <laughs> I was on the board when That's you right. Came you were on, on the board 24, when you, 24 years, ago. years ago. So Yeah. The, the family was young at that point. <laughs> and I'm still and, going. And, and they moved on. But you're doing, you're doing a fantastic <laughs> job. The, and, of course, we have some nice... Um, Norsk is coming in yes. uh, down in Plattsburgh. So that's happening for job creation and stuff like that. I mean, what we've, what we've developed here in the region and, and here in the northern tier, it's very evident as well. Uh, are, are really two tracks of, of development to, that to relate to our success. Number one is really understanding every single day, getting up and saying, we're going to nurture our relationship with Quebec mm -hmm. uh, to foster that investment that continues to come in here in a variety of ways. But then specifically within that, tram station equipment and aerospace. And um, I don't think everybody realizes, they know about Bombardier and Novabus, uh, they don't realize we now have 33 transportation equipment and aerospace companies uh, in the North Country. 8,100 people got up this morning, went to work for a transportation equipment and aerospace related employer. Uh, so that cluster has developed very strongly and that in turn, in today's world, brings more of that. That's why Norsk is here. Uh, Norris is coming here because we already had an established cluster of transportation equipment related companies, which means you have the vendors and suppliers and the supply chain networks, and you have the training uh, programs that would be suitable for them at Clinton Community College and CV Tech and Clarkson that you wouldn't have if you hadn't been developing those through the years. You would never get a Norris. Right. Well, and you know, when 24 years ago when you talked about coming here, I mean, I remember the first year you were here, you were a visionary. You wanted to become a regional chamber, that we had to get more than just the Plattsburgh Chamber and the Ticonderoga Chamber and the Rouses Point Chamber. You had a vision of what this could become, and, and I think from your efforts, you're seeing that fruition come to, to reality. Well, I, I'm, I'm fond of saying, because it's true, uh, the, the, the chamber recognized, uh, and you were a part of that at the time, uh, when Plattsburgh Air Force Base closed and that, that totally unexpected, uh, s scandalously political uh, decision, uh, what was the real lesson of that? And the real lesson that I took away, the Chamber took away, is that this area was not only politically irrelevant, that's bad enough, we were politically disposable. That amongst the irrelevant areas of New York State, if one of them had to be thrown out of the lifeboat, it would be this area that get thrown out of the lifeboat. Right. And that's what happened. And that uh, we needed to address our political effectiveness. We needed to learn how to punch above our weight because our weight by itself was never going to make us significant within the vast metrocentric imperial state of New York. Right. And regionalizing the business community was the, was the all-important first step. Uh, to uh, to building a network of more than 4,000 businesses instead of 800. Right. Getting at the table, getting in the conversations that we never used to be invited into, uh, but now are. Uh, and, and I think the greatest contribution of the Chamber in the last 20 years has been a growing sense of regionalism. And you now see that with the United Way and the Red Cross and, uh, and Hudson Headwaters, perfect example of that. You see that now increasingly where, you know, it's not Champlain or Plattsburgh or Saranac Lake or Malone against the world because the world's going to win every time in that <laughs> exactly. equation. Exactly. It's we're going to support one another and we're going to do things together. And the Chamber, of course, is supported by businesses by paying their yearly dues and stuff. And I know that the membership has grown tremendously <laughs> under your leadership, but there's always room for growth. And uh, I'm hoping people that are watching this, that are business owners, uh, 
would mind joining the chamber. I know that. I, I, I don't even know. What, all I know is the bill comes in, I say pay it. It's not. It's not even a question. I want to support the chamber because of what they do for the area. So it's a it's a very modest investment based on number of employees. And that's what it is as an investment. And we obviously have a lot of tangible services that any business could immediately take advantage of, networking and so on. Uh, but the other thing is, if the business community is not collectively uh, supporting the strategic work we do in Quebec, uh, what we do to bring federal resources into the area, the redevelopment of the airport space in the Plattsburgh International Airport, going out and bringing foreign direct investment like Norris Titanium into mm -hmm. the area, all of those things, nobody else is paying us to do that. Exactly. So to sustain that kind of activity, uh, all businesses and organizations in the area, making that two, three, four, five hundred dollar annual investment in the chamber is what allows us to have a professional 14 member staff to go out and do the things that we do. And I'll say it again, they do a phenomenal job. When I was there 24 years ago, I was amazed that the work that the staff did. Hire smart people and oh, let, let them make you look good. It's, absolutely. <laughs> in my case, that's a great <laughs> challenge, but they're a remarkable team and they manage it every once in a while. <laughs> so if somebody wants watching this wants to join the chamber, how could they go about doing that? Give us a call at 518-563-1000 or visit our website at North Country Chamber, all one word, dot com. Well, I'll tell you, this has been a very informative conversation with Gary Douglas, the president of the Chamber of Commerce. And I will tell you just from experience, for the past 24 years, without hesitation, we pay our dues to the uh, the Chamber because we realize it. And it's what you see here today. This just didn't happen today. And as you heard uh, Dr. John Ruggie say, this started four years ago, at least when Dr. Morris Racine made that phone call with the help from a lot of people from the background, as, as we were told earlier. So it's, you're making an investment, not only an investment to the North Country, you're making an investment to your family, you're making an investment to the people that you love. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all in this thing together. Uh, the, what comes here, a lot of the money stays here, we support each other, and um, it starts at the grassroots effort, and the Chamber is really a grassroots effort for you to get involved, uh, involved. And, and if they really are into it, they can try to get on the board, or there's something that, that they can the do board, for the board, uh, we have a SCORE chapter, they could uh, they could assist through volunteer counseling, you know, other small businesses and entrepreneurs, they could be an ambassador, they can be involved in government affairs. Um, there are a lot of different ways to be involved and to have their employees involved. Right, and then, then, then there's a bunch of uh, programs that can actually benefit their business also. Everything from health insurance to networking to business counseling to uh, workplace safety training, uh, human resource and uh, assistance, job fairs. Uh, we, of course, also house uh, the tourism uh, and uh, visitors bureau for the region. Uh, so all of that effort to make sure our Canadian friends continue to come here and spend money uh, in our restaurants and our hospitality businesses, a little bit of everything. Well, Gary, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I appreciate the kind Not words. only come up here, but to come and speak to Hometown Cable. My pleasure. All right, thank you, Gary. Okay. And now I'm with Dr. Bill O'Dwyer, and uh, you are uh, on the board of Hudson Headwaters? Yes, I've been on the board now for about 10 years. Uh, I had to get off for one year because regulations require you can only spend nine years, then you have to get off for a year, and then they invited me back, which surprised me, but they did. But, and you accepted. <laughs> and I accepted it, yeah. So, so obviously uh, you love what you do with I, the board. I love, this is a wonderful board. This is, uh, this whole group of people that run Hudson Headwaters is a fantastic group of people. Uh, knowledgeable, hardworking, and we just got through a survey from the, from the federal government. We scored almost perfect, no major complaints. They were so proud of our organization, our buildings, that they are going to use that as a prototype for going around to other places in the country. So it's not only local, we are now part of a network right. throughout the United States. That is awesome. Yeah. Now, now, you're from what area? Chestertown. Chester I represent County. Chestertown Horicon. So were yeah. you a primary care physician? I, I was a pediatrician for pediatrician. 40, 40 years. I retired 13 years ago and that's when Dr. Ruggie said, oh, we need a doctor on the board with you. I felt I couldn't. I went to the board meeting and I figured this is a good board. Now, were you a pediatrician in Chester County? In, no, in Albany area. In Albany area, okay. Yeah, Latham. All right. Yeah. And um, so what got you involved? I know Dr. Ruggie asked you, but... I had been involved with uh, inner city health okay. centers in Albany, we call Whitney M. M. Young Health Center in okay. Albany. And I was involved with them for 25 years okay. when I was in, in practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I retired 13 years ago and came up to Chestertown where we had a house and I moved there permanently. And okay. then that's when 
Dr. Rugging and got a hold of me and said, listen, come on, <laughs> you got a thing. Like, I couldn't resist him, and I'm so happy that I did because it's been uh, very well uh, done board, and uh, the board works hard. Mm -hmm. So we have a good board, and certainly we've got a great administration. I mean, you, you had a very distinguished career in, in uh, being a pediatrician. Have you ever envisioned something like this from the time you started to where we are now, the, the cooperation? That well, we as I say, I was on the board of uh, Whitney M. Young Health Center, which was, a, again, a federally qualified health center in Albany for 25 years, so I had some knowledge of what community health centers were. But obviously, that was one single facility that we had in downtown mm -hmm. Albany. Now to think that we go from Moreau up to here, is, and we have 17 health centers. We see a thousand patients a day, wow. and that's a, that has increased so much since I've been on the board. Right, and uh, it's been really satisfying to know that we are be able to provide health care to the North Country and to provide quality care to the North Country. And uh, every day, our people are very uh, willing to serve and uh, provide the health care that is really required. And with what you're doing here and what you've done to the other 17 facilities, you must see a trend where it's much easier to recruit primary physicians to the area. Well, it, it is because, as I was just saying to the student here, 2% of the graduates of medical schools go into primary care, so only 2%. So we have got a small group that we have to recruit from. And uh, certainly uh, John Ruggie and uh, the Vermont have been able to provide some uh, primary care physicians, uh, students. Now we're going to have a student program and a residency program here. So we'll have, a, we'll have the full thing between uh, seeing with physicians and being with the hospitals and the university. We're able to get more and more people that are interested in coming to North Country. And, and how, many, how many members are on your board? We have 17 members on the 17? board. Yeah. Wow. Okay. In other words, from each community. Okay. Okay. We have representatives from each community that we serve. So you meet monthly for sure? We meet every month. As needed? Every month, and then they have extra ones, yes. Yeah. And then there's committee meetings, of course, always. Right. So, like, I'm on about six committees. So <laughs> that takes up my retired yeah. It takes up a lot of your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I've really enjoyed it, obviously, or else I would have, you sure. know, I would not have uh, stayed on. And I enjoy it because it's a well-run board, mm -hmm. and it's a well-run organization. It sounds like a good working board. It is a working, good working board, and as I say, the administration of Hudson Headwaters is unbelievable, as well, you know, with Dr. Ruggie as the head. Mm -hmm. So, his vision of medicine, not only in New York State, but throughout the country, is unbelievable. Well, on behalf of Champlain, I want to thank you for the efforts that you put in on this with your board. And uh, it uh, comes through that you have a real love for medi or medicine. And uh, thank you for what you've done. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Be best. And now we, we get the, the uh, privilege of talking to the state senator, Betty Little. And, and thank you for coming up here. Uh, I know you, in your earlier speech you said you got up a little bit earlier. Well, somehow I misjudged the travel <laughs> time uh, by an hour. So, but it was fun. We got to go over to Moore's and uh, talk to the supervisor Jeff over there and Jack DeGroon and all. So, mm -hmm. and got a good example of why this healthcare facility is so important. He couldn't come today because he was going to Plattsburgh for something that he will be able to do here. He'll come here, yeah. The, um, and I don't think people realize just the work that you do for us in the state, the work behind the scenes. And like you said, that was like a four-year process. But there was a lot yeah. of effort on your part to make that happen. Well, we, you know, they put their ideas together, and you either support them or don't. But you have right. to look at it and see what can be done and certainly deal with the Department of Health all the time and how things are moving through slowly through the Department of Health. But uh, this was a project, and, and I've known John Ruggie for a long time and seen what he has done in rural areas. He's mm -hmm. brought health care that they really would not have had because what we do see is it is difficult to attract a physician to a rural area. And one of the things that even the hospitals in our areas have a problem with is that physician has a spouse or a partner who has a career. Mm -hmm. And where are they going to work? Right. So you're always talking about double jobs, not just a single job for sure. someone. And uh, this is wonderful because he has really raised the level. And 
I was saying to Dr. O'Dwyer, nothing <clears throat> has changed, or to Dr. Racine actually, nothing has changed more in the last 10, 20 years than healthcare mm -hmm. and how it is delivered. Oh my, yeah. So much is outpatient, so much is, you know, faster, more efficient, and all of that, but uh, getting people to have accessibility to it. I think people will move here and live here because of this because they see that there is a healthcare facility that has a future. Right. And, and that's key because you don't build something like this without being able to ensure sure. there is a future with it. And having medical students from the University of Vermont and I'm sure soon to be residents and really trying to attract them at that level that when they graduate, they look at this area for a place to practice sure. in. I mean, this is really the tip of the iceberg here. I mean, it's just going to grow and grow. Oh, absolutely. And the building is beautiful and has lots of room to grow in. And we're talking to Dr. O'Dwyer, and I didn't realize this, but he said of all the pe uh, people that go into the medi medicine, only 2% want to be primary physicians. Yes. So it is <clears> a very competitive field. It is, because uh, the specialties uh, get higher reimbursement rates and, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing different things and more of a specialty, so they get paid for that. They have longer training, although primary care certainly has a long residency as well. But today, um, we have increased the reimbursements in insurance for primary care. Okay. And actually, uh, Dr. Ruggie was one for Hudson Headwaters who... Um, put it on the line and he said we can't continue unless you're going to reimburse primary care we won't take your insurance right and they all stepped up to the table and uh, so he's he's just done a lot for health care in the whole, oh, it's whole region it's amazing and for his passion to keep it going right you know and here we are yeah. four years later up in Champlain yeah. and Dr. Racine is saying you know I knew I was thinking of retiring eventually and what was going to happen I said well not every physician would think that Right. Well, a lot of them could just walk away, but uh, he really um, had the vision to say, wait a second, what's going to happen sure. when I'm gone? But I, that doesn't surprise me from Dr. Racine. No. He's just a good yeah. old North Country uh, boy, as I'll say. We grew up right. together, and yeah. you know, and he does love this area. And, Absolutely, uh, loves the area, and wants to see that people can continue to live here. Right. I mean, and you and you see what he what he did. It wasn't about him. It no, was about the people of the North Country. Not at all. And the people that he had working for him. He wanted to see that they had a future. Of course. And could continue in health care. But somebody, you know, people aren't going to live in an area unless they know they have good health care and accessibility mm -hmm. to some health care. They're certainly not going to move to that area. Sure. And what we need the most is more year-round residents so that we can see some growth. Yeah, well, we're very fortunate for the people that were here today, and we're very fortunate for you, Senator, for oh, the, the you. service you give to us in the state of New York. And... Uh, we, we need your support, and you always seems to be there for us, whether it's at the schools or whether it's something like this. But thank yeah. you for your service to the state. Well, it's a great part of, the, of my district. I love coming up here, too. Well, thanks again. Thank you. All right, so we made it to the, the drawing of the main floor of Hudson Headwaters here in Champlain, and I'm with um, Melissa Gooley and, of course, Celine Paquette. And Melissa, what is your, I, of course we call it the medical center and it'll be changing obviously. Uh, what is your role at the medical center? I'm the nurse manager. Okay. And you kind of give us a little insight from, you're going from 4,500 square feet to 26,000 square feet. Yes. If I read my stuff right your here. Your script right, you're right. Okay. So can you kind of explain what you're able to offer now that you can't offer yeah. before? Well, we definitely are going to be able to um, increase our providers and our MDs, DOs, and nurse practitioners and physician's assistants. And with that, we'll also have x-ray. We'll continue to have lab hours. Um, but as you'll see, we're going from 10 rooms that we currently have in our building to 24 patient rooms, as well as we'll have a care manager for each. They're calling these pods. So we're going with team-based approach and in each pod we'll have a care manager. We'll also have room for behavioral health to be integrated right into the building. Right now we have a satellite office behind us, but we'll be able to have our own behavioral health staff. Um, as well, um, we have rooms built in for consults for specialists, and as do you heard Dr. Ruggie, he'll be working on that, getting specific specialists in that could be seeing patients in our area instead of patients having to travel. Um, there'll be a, a a room right here, I believe, like a conference room. So we might be able to help, you know, have the community come in and do some uh, 
community rooms thing, okay. you know, meetings, educational purposes, classes, um, and just a lot of room. A lot. We have two bathrooms right now, one staff, one patient, so we're going to 13. Um, and and a lot, uh, you know, we'll have, uh, I'll be able to store more vaccines, more medications. Um, we are, we, we're seeing peds from birth up. Now, so. were, you, were you part of the process of the, the brain trust to try to put this together for the uh, not at all no. no they've been doing they've done this they do this well they know what they're doing okay. so they did come up and show it to us to ask us if we had any suggestions and I think the entire office just had tears in their eyes because we were so excited we had no suggestions um, we really did want the community room but other than that I mean they they did it all so does, it, does this floor plan deviate much different from the other floor plans? It's very have? similar to their newest building, West Mountain 2. Okay. And there is one. I understand Warrensburg. Warrensburg is similar. two floors, but yeah. it's similar. Yeah. Yes, they, we'll okay. have one the floor. entrance. Yep. Uh, the uh, area. What is very nice is for our ambulance entrance, they'll have their own entrance now right off to the side. Right now it gets very chaotic yeah, right. and congested it when it comes. Right. They'll have their own entrance. We'll have a, this will be covered, so there'll be a covered drop off for patients. Of course, things will now be handicap accessible, whereas as they have not been it's been very tricky with wheelchairs stretchers and what have you um, we'll have a procedure room we don't have that now um, so yeah now, there, now I see a main floor plan is there more growth for the second floor or is I, mean, I, have, I don't think I don't that's think so. no. thought of right yeah. now. No, okay, no. so this is the main floor. It's going to be a one, is it, it looks like a two-story building. Well, I think that's because is it more of, just of, the the design? of the windows. Okay. Okay. You can see the yeah, windows here. Right. They look like two the floors. Yeah. Gorgeous. Lots of light that they let in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is, more confidentiality, mm -hmm. you know, which is big. Right now we're very tight. So how, you have how many doctors right now at the medical center? Right now we, well, we'll have our fourth doctor starting next week. Okay. Um, and then we have two nurse practitioners and a physician's assistant. And then when you make the move over to this 26,000 square foot facility. They're already recruiting. They're so. recruiting now, yep. okay. So do you know what the goal is? How many they'd like to get up to? I do not have to do okay. that. Do you have any idea, Celine? No, no. no. But Because I, I, I anticipate once this opens up that we're going to grow so fast that they're going to look at enlarging it. That's really? my app. Wow. I, I mean, I, 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 I'm really seeing further you're beyond. You're really being a visionary on yes, this one. Yes, And they have room for growth. Absolutely. We have six acres here. Yeah, I so. think they did say that this is the one house center that they've ever purchased this much land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For that potential growth. Yeah. And the reality is, and of course we're here because we do need it. And uh, as Gary said, it is economic growth yeah. when you put well, a facility like this. Yeah, the closest primary care is Plattsburgh right now. Right. And t that's 25 minutes away, 30 sure. minutes away. Absolutely. And going west, we have nothing up to the border of Franklin and Clinton County. Right. It really Same isn't. with pediatrics. So mm -hmm. we definitely are building our pediatric yes. patient base now. And wow. women's health is also being provided. Uh, nice. It's health care. And I know, Celine, you had a lot to do with this behind the scenes. You're on the board and stuff. And Well, at so. the board, I was always saying, and when, and when. <laughs> we need it. We need it. So, But being in government, it, it got you, you to understand. Be. Oh, yes, you, yes, You understand yes, the yes, delays. Yes, yes, Not that we that, agree with it. But. Yeah, that last $3 million of district funds was what we were really waiting for. And when we got that, well. And you know, I, I, when we first got on the camera, we talked to the representatives from Stewart's. What a nice corporate neighbor to throw a hundred thousand dollars. They guaranteed our x-ray machine. That, yeah. that is absolutely yeah. phenomenal, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, as you know, we're all North Country people here. Yes. There's no better place to live. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I, ca I came back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, and you do, you see people come and go. Mm -hmm. The ones that go always come back and go, what did I leave for? Yeah, right. You know, there's, right. there's nothing more beautiful in this area. Yeah. I'll say nine months out of the year. Oh, I, when, I enjoy the 12 months. When, when, <laughs> winter, winters can be tough, but but if you're into winter sports, it's, it's another gorgeous sure, part of the sure, season. Sure. We're very fortunate to have all four seasons, yeah. but uh, appreciate you guys getting on the camera uh, for well, Hometown well, Cable. Well, thank you for being here for us. And, oh, well, mm -hmm. this is this is a big event. That, and, thank uh, you for this public service. <laughs> well, yes, thank you. you're more than welcome. Thank you. So thank you again. There, there's the brain behind <laughs> yeah. this. Okay, well, and, and coming off to my, my left here is Dr. John Ruggie, and Doctor, thank you uh, for coming up here today. Uh, thank you for being here. Yeah. The um, I'm amazed. This is what the 17th facility would be number 18. This is 17. This would Although be we don't, it's, I don't regard it as 17. They're all tied for number one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. But but I mean, but it's the 17th building. We have 17 centers all together. Center, and this is right, one of them. Right. <laughs> That's right. right. You got it. And it's it's. Um, 
very impressive your vision when you got the phone call from uh, Dr. Morris Racine that you jumped on this and uh, that you still want to carry it on and, and still grow and that's that's very impressive. Yeah, when, when Dr. Racine called, my next call actually was to Stevens Monday as president and CEO of CVPH and I said, Stevens, I just got this call from Dr. Racine, I don't know him yet. Would this be a good thing? And he said, John, you should go for it. And so knowing we had hospital support, local doctor, and then we just had the hope that the local community would feel the same way. And you can see today the outpouring. I mean, the, the kind of support from local towns, from the county, the people living in our communities. Mm -hmm. um, for Celine Paquette, who has been sitting on our board now for three years, and every step of the way is asking how are we coming along with this project and we're coming along very nicely. Right. So did, did you feel did you feel this uh, welcoming right from day one? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When we when we first um, met Dr. Cena in his office and walked through the waiting room and see the patients and say these people would appreciate a new facility. They would appreciate it. Dr. Racine having partners, and he would appreciate not having to carry the whole burden alone. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. It's a no-lose, except there's always the problem of financing. Always a matter of how do you how do you congregate the people so the energy can be directed. No, I, I, it's happened. Now I don't know your story, but were you a primary care physician yourself? I am. What do you mean were? You still you still practice? Well, not until one o'clock this afternoon. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought this was your your whole thing now that you were no. you weren't practicing anymore. So you no. still practice? I see patients. And and right from out of uh, med school into primary? I did. I, I my story my personal story is I came to the town of Chester for six months, and the plan didn't work out. Yeah, I'm okay. still there. <laughs> so there was a need, and the appreciation, the support from local people, and the ability to find other physicians sharing a sense of of mission. How do we do the right thing for others? Make makes, makes a difference. Now Hudson Headwaters has been around for how many years now? Well. The first health center was started under hospital auspices, Glensville's Hospital, in 1974. Okay. And we um, won a federal grant in 1980 that made all this possible with a requirement that we separate and have our own individual entity, corporation. Mm -hmm. And so September 1, 1981, Hudson Hill Waters became an official new licensed health facility. Okay. And that was the, a new start for us. Now, when you had this vision for rural health care. Did you envision this 17 facilities? You were exaggerating. There was no vision. There, there was, was no vision. There, it was a simple matter of saying here we are in Chester and we've got to find a way to give health care and then the next town south, Warrensburg, lost its last doctor and the question is is there anything we can do there and then came North Creek and then came Indian Lake and then came Bolton Landing. So it just kind of grew by necessity? And it was organic. It, it yeah. happened by people calling and coming in to say, what do we do? And say, well, maybe we can figure it out together. Mm -hmm. And the more people are together, the more you can do. So, but you have a lot on your plate then. I mean, you're still practicing. You're still running this. You're, I'm sorry, you're on the board too, I'm assuming. We have a lot of help. Yeah. You can, well. see, you can see today how many people are all here organizing. Yeah. So this is a matter of watching people work very hard and very cooperatively mm -hmm. and doing good things. Is it, well, you know, it, we, we do a show called Talk in Business, but every community has their own hometown heroes. And whether you, you're too modest to accept it, but you are a hometown hero for what you've done from Chestertown I will, all the way I will up. Now it's being deeply rooted now. <laughs> yeah, you, you are definitely <laughs> deeply rooted now, yeah, but yeah. but your your legacy is definitely here. Yeah. And many, many people benefit from, from your vision, whether you call it a vision or not, but from your actions and as a community member, we can't thank you enough. Well, sometimes people have to find somebody to center around. I'm glad to be in, you know, in the center of things, but again, the real emphasis on, we're a community health center and the emphasis is on community. Right. That the number of people coming together and willing to work so hard and give their time and treasure is pretty amazing. It is. It's amazing what has happened here and, and from a phone call from Dr. Racine to this point, it's pretty pretty Barbara, impressive. Wait till you see the building. I can, well, yeah. I, I just see pictures, yeah, but I can't Hill wait Center. to see it. But well, you have one similar to this, right? None quite like it. I mean, we really do our best to, to make any new facility match the needs for that community right. and also say something about the local architecture and how they would fit in. And so when I first saw the architect's rendering said, this is new, this is different. 
but wow. it's in keeping. And you know, when we were talking to Celine just a little bit earlier, she really envisions more growth with what you're putting here, and yeah. of course, you got the land to do it. Yeah, that was the idea. We yeah. we know that that um, if we make a mistake, it's always thinking too small. <laughs> right, right. Well, again, on behalf of the North Country, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. You bet. Thanks a lot. All right, nice bye -bye. To see you. Thanks. We did it. <laughs> Well, I'm with Dr. Morris Racine, and that will be your, that's your official, obviously, uh, professional name, but we know you as Mo, Mo yeah. you know, growing yeah. up together, you yeah. know, uh, Champlain and Perry's Miller's here. But uh, I'm impressed, and I'll call you, I hope you don't mind me calling you Mo. I don't care. Okay. I, I, there are other names you've called me before. <laughs> <laughs> when we were kids. <laughs> or, or on the ball field or something, but besides that. Oh, I remember that time you were. <laughs> oh, that time, oh yeah. Well, you have to remember that time. <laughs> But you know, it's you want to come back here many years ago as a primary physician, yeah. which Dr. Racine and Dr. Starr, yeah. who were the, the first visionaries here, what drove you back here? Was it was it the North Country? Was it family? I mean, because primary, what I, I'm being told is uh, only like two percent of medical students want to go into primary care. Right. So how did you choose that field? I think high school for me was a uh, time where I had a lot of energy and it was obvious I needed to go in to a field that would take all my energy. So medical school, looking up to Dr. Salfing and Dr. Starr was kind of our role model because they, they practice here. Um, I was fortunate to get into medical school. Um, I have a very strong family ethic and mm -hmm. one of the biggest reason I came back was my mother and father, my brother and sisters, the family. Right. And the extended family, such as Celine Paquette, and sure. Alan Racine, you know, right. that works for Glens Falls now. Right. So, and, and 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 you really are. Family is not just your family; it's also the people you've grown up with all your life. And and almost everybody here, all, all of us know each other, so you help each other. I mean, we <laughs> may not be happy with each other, but when the chips are down, right? Everybody's there to help each other, and, exactly. and I don't wanted that. I had some. Great opportunities like in Alexander Bay, et cetera. But, and I'm really glad I came back. I I was there till my mom and dad died, and mm -hmm. they were very happy that I was around sure. to help them. So I think the biggest reason was family. So the uh, the last person, the last doctor retire was it Dr. Southwick or Star? Dr. Star. Star. And what year did he, did he retire? Around 2006, he went into the nursing home. Okay. Became medical director at Meadowbrook. So you've been basically solo for 10 years. But this well, vision of not yours... Not till about Glens Falls, not until we, you know, I called down to Glens Falls. Right, but you but you were, but how long before you called Glens Falls from the time Dr. Starr I get, retired? It was about a couple years, three okay. years, four years, and it was obvious to me that I wouldn't be able to do this alone. Uh, and I gave up the hospital about six and a half years ago. And right after I gave up my hospital privileges, that's when I called Dr. Rungi. He was intrigued. This practice, we take Fidelis, Medicaid, Medicare. Our ratios of private and, and all that was pretty close to what they do down there. And they're a health clinic, a federal health clinic. Mm -hmm. So that was a good match. And he could see that if I was not there, this clinic would close. Right. And from there, we went into the process of getting grant money and, you know, having Fletcher Allen come on board, CVPH come on board, everybody... And, and luckily, everybody's come on board that there is this need here. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sure over this four-year period, you have ups and downs where you think it's going to happen, it's not going to happen. Or, or after that call, did it look like there was uh, acceptance and it was getting steam and it was moving forward and you knew this day would come? It, 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 I, I would say the trait of Dr. Rungi is a very persistent, patient man, and I would say you may not believe it, I'm also a very patient man. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't always exhibit that, but... <laughs> in your, in, in your yeah. environment, yes. Yeah. In your so, environment, so, yes. So I think that, um, uh, I, you know, once... And, and Dr. Shaw and I had a discussion alone about the place, and I think he was impressed with how much repair work I did and how much I did to keep it together. And he mm -hmm. said, okay, until the new building's built, Basically, we're going to let you be here, and then once the new building's built, obviously we will move into it. Sure. So now, the state of New York even helped us because this facility is so outdated now right. for a practice that it's it really needs a new facility. So I knew 
we had grown so much that there was no question it would happen. It's just when would it happen. Okay. And then, of course, and some people speak and they talked about, you know, the day would come that when you retire, you want to make sure that there was something here. Yeah. How soon is that day coming? Are you going to be able to well, enjoy this facility? What I want to do, I'm coming to this facility. What I want to do, January 1st, 2018, is take four months off. Okay. And then the eight months in the summertime, working with residents, students, patients, but doing much more of a teaching role. Okay. And not a director of the facility or worrying about any of the day-to-day. -day, right. But more just teaching residents and medical students. Right. So that's where you see the shift going. Yeah, yeah. And that'll be fun. So, so January 1st, 18, then you pretty much stop practicing? No, I'm going to take four months off and... But the eight months here, you'll still practice? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, okay, I'm going to okay. keep my... Pra but the four months off, I'll be oh, out of... whatever. I'm going to be down in the Caribbean. Yeah, doing, and relaxing. And come in the end of April, I'm going to come back and work right. a hard eight months, you know. But the thing is, you've earned that right to do that. And, it, I, and, that, and that's a wonderful story that you're sharing because you've worked your whole career here. Yeah. And it's nice that a facility's coming in that will warrant that you could be able to do that. I think that's awesome. Well, again, it's it, there's I, you can't. I, there's one story I wish I could have said that one of the things that triggered me to call Dr. Rungi, there was uh, when when President Obama first came in, there was a problem with Medicare. We didn't receive any Medicare checks for three months, and that's a big part of our practice. And we, some of the employees, including myself, had the whole our paychecks right till and they and they willingly did it till the money came in and they got reimbursed but that was one of the things that triggered me it's like wow I need to be with an organization so when just one little bump like that you'd have to close until you get checks sure and stuff yeah well I mean this is this is big business but in any small business cash flows very very important as you well know yeah so, yeah, I can understand why you got a little nervous. <laughs> More than nervous. Yeah, I, think, I think I would have been too. So, do you like, I know you get back to a patient. Anything else you'd like to add for this segment here? There are a lot, of, it, it, it's, it, you can't name all the people that put a lot of hard work to get this done. It's, it, I know my name comes up in Dr. Rungi, but it, it, it's like you, you may be the leader, but there are some people that in the background that just, you can't name them that just wanted this to happen. Right, just yeah. and I And I think it's great, Murnane's are, uh, Pat Murnane, you know, this organization is gonna be putting the building up. Jim Diesel, you know, got the cement contract. It's yeah. like, to me, it's like, yeah. I'm ecstatic because that that's another small business. They hire local guys. To, and I know those, uh, the guys that drive the cement trucks are, they'll be proud, like, right. this is my facility. You exactly. Know, it's, you know. Well, and, and, and I think you're a little shortchanging yourself, and, and I say this sincerely, because, yeah, there's people that bought into this, but it starts with the leadership, and that started with Dr. Ruggie and, and Dr. Racine. So, you guys were the visionaries, you're the ones that started this, and it, you need leadership. You need somebody to lead this. You guys did it, and we're here today because of you two. Well, thank you. All right, and I appreciate you coming on camera for us. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Jerry. I'll see you tomorrow. I get well, this is bringing a conclusion to the groundbreaking ceremony of, of Hudson Headwaters. And uh, we had Howard Nelson. These are the, he was the coordinator of today's uh, groundbreaking ceremony. But we had Celine Paquette, uh, who was on the board of Hudson, or Hudson Headwaters and, of course, a former legislature here for us in the northern tier. And, of course, Dr. Or Dr. John Ruggie, the CEO and founder of Hudson Headwaters, Larry Barcombe, the town supervisor, uh, got up and spoke. State Senator Betty Little was able to get up and say a few words. Of course, Gary Douglas, we were very fortunate to be able to interview him also after, but Gary got up to say a few words. And um, I got Diane uh, Slosko from UVM Health Center. I might have messed up her last name, but she was able to speak on behalf of University Health Center. And then, of course, we had Dr. Mo Racine get up and say a few words. And, uh, you know, you've heard Mo and you heard uh, Dr. Ruggie talk about Dr. Southwick and Dr. Starr. And, of course, this past week, we, we lost our beloved Dr. Starr. Um, he, had, he passed away on uh, August 4th. And um, we want to send our condolences to his family, to his eight children. And um, Dr. Starr um, did a lot for this community, as, as you well know. And, and uh, you know, we talk about hometown heroes. Well, Dr. Uh, Southwick and Dr. Starr are definitely local hometown heroes uh, for our medical needs as we were kids growing up. And uh, I don't know if Calvin can get this and if it even shows, but 
there's a scar I had that Dr. South or Dr. Star uh, put some uh, stitches on that one day after a softball game and uh, luckily it was right down the road we were playing at the Bow Mart and went right down and it was off hours and he came in and and you think back as a kid you don't really realize it but as an adult you think back of how many times they were taken away from their families because taking care of other people in the community and we kind of take that for granted with our doctors um, so we're very very fortunate to have had Dr. Starr and, and again I'll say again we pass our condolences off to his family and and Dr. Southwick was not here today but if you're watching this Dr. Southwick thank you too for your service to the, the people of the North Country and and all that you have done and you still do um, it's, it's just great not only to have you guys as doctors but to to be able to call you friends. And uh, that's what we are in the North Country. Uh, we're a close-knit community and uh, strong work ethic. Um, just, it's who we are as North Country people. So this was the uh, groundbreaking of Hudson Headwaters. And um, in a year from now, it's gonna look a whole lot different. And I think uh, you're gonna be very, very impressed with what's going on here. And uh, Calvin, thank you for having me over to do this with you today. Um, and I'm sure we'll get another talking business second section going again. But this really wasn't talking business. It was more of a, it was more community home, community Town stories, stories, hometown stories, as Calvin's calling it. So this was a hometown story uh, that uh, we wanted to share with the community, and of course with the worldwide web. web people all across the world can see this if they get the link to it. And um, quickly, I guess I haven't done this in a bit, uh, please send a donation to 1477 Ridge Road in Champlain, New York, 12919. And uh, Calvin would appreciate it. He is not federally funded or state funded. Uh, he is just individual funded or business funded. So if you enjoy this programming, please send a, a donation to Calvin. Calvin is on the camera, the founding father of Hometown Cable. I'm Joey Trombley. And thank you for joining us today.